Welcome to Come for Number Two. I am your host, Echo Fan Grey Wolf. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties with the tablet, but so TikTok isn't set up yet either. But it will be once this gets straight. Uh, well, that's that like it's going to TikTok. It's not supposed to go to TikTok. Okay, something went wrong. I did not push to TikTok. TikTok's going to be on a cell phone. I am sorry. Technical difficulties. I know damn well that I hit the G. Yeah, you, the G. What, man? I swear. <laughs> This ain't supposed to happen, but anyway, TikTok's not going to get to see any of this, but you guys are. I wish this thing would hurry the hell up. Tonight's very special. It is Native American Heritage Month, by the way. Happy Native American Heritage Month. Day 16th. And now we're going to get this thing to give me what I need. Come on, where's the stuff? I can't stand technology, man. I swear to, to freaking God. If I didn't need it to work, the shit would work. But because I needed to work, there we go. <sighs> okay, look, I can worry about the Pink Ranger later. Right now. It is got the pink ranger. Well, she was right there. That she magically disappeared. All right, come on, scroll over. It's not even giving me like the microphone or anything. See, it's still just blank. I don't understand what the hell's going on with this damn thing. What the fuck, yo? Okay, we're gonna restart this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so since um TikTok's not gonna see this part unless they actually find the video tonight, we're doing a villain. All right, we're doing a villain who also served in the United States military, or at least the military, because I don't remember if he's actually. First Nations, which I don't think he is. I'm pretty sure he's Native American to the Americas. In other words, I'm pretty sure he's one of the tribes that are down here in America. So we're going to do that as soon as this stupid-ass tablet fix itself. Because it's fucking its battle, buddy. That being me. And um, we're going to try to get this stuff right. Because um, I want to do it in at least two videos for TikTok. If possible. Maybe three. We're going to find out if, you know, if it wasn't for technology, I would probably be in a little bit better shape. And that's only because of my inability to understand how the fuck technology works. So there's that. So we're going to try this and see how far we go. And then we're going to be done. It's taking forever. It's still loading. And there we go. Let's see what happens. Swipe to open. I hit that little arrow there. Come on. It's a black screen. Yes, that's my panda. One of them. Yeah, they're kissing. Well, one of them's kissing the other one's eye. All right, swipe to open. Try it again. Swipe to open. There you go. You gonna move now? Come on, damn it. There we go. Come on, keep moving. Keep moving. Come on, man. Oh, for the love of God. 
Just scroll a couple of more. All right. Marvel Comics, Scrap Hunter. Damn it, I said it wrong. Marvel Comics, Scalp Hunter. <laughs> yes, damn it, I said it wrong. Marvel Comics, Scalp Hunter. All right. Now we need to hook up TikTok. Happy Native American Heritage Month. This is day 16th. Tonight is a very special night because tonight we're doing a villain. TikTok, I've already done the introductions to YouTube, so we'll do this for you. Hello, my name is Echo Fan Grey Wolf, a.k.a. James Williams Jr., and let's begin. Tonight's special is a villain known as the leader of the Marauders, Scalp Hunter. We will show you some images of him. And in my defense, I have not read a comic book since 2010. All right? So here we go. This is Scalp Hunter. I will show you the Scalp Hunter I remember. And then I will show you the Scalp Hunter that everyone else pretty much knows. That is not the picture that I touched. I'm sorry, I've had technical difficulties. If you've been on um, YouTube watching, then you know I've had some serious difficulties. These are the Marauders. Scalp Hunter. Vertigo, um, Riptide, Harpoon, I forgot this guy, and that's Archlight. She's Vietnamese, everybody else is like white, and he's Native American. Alright, so that's the deal on them. Oh, they're missing a member. He's not on this picture, but this is where Sabretooth was before they rewrote him and made him Wolverine's nemesis. Alright. Come on. Scroll up. I'll give you some proof. Because, like it or not, for those who don't know shit about the X-Men, or for those who now know the shit that I no longer know, Wol um, Wolverine and Sabretooth really didn't have any like problems in the 80s. That was some recon, retcon shit. Sabretooth was technically... Scalp Hunter's bitch. Alright. There you have Scalp Hunter, Archlight, that guy, I don't know who that is, that person, and that's Polaris, who became Malice. Um, and then you got Sabretooth right there. They would be a thorn in the X-Men's ass during the Inferno saga. Let's see if I can give you a better picture of the whole team with Polaris. And Blockbuster and Prism. Alright, I'm not going to get their names a thousand percent right. Alright. So, there we have... I want to say that's Riptide. But that looks like a girl. And Riptide's a guy. Then you have Sabretooth, Archlight, Polaris, a.k.a. Malice. The dude in the green suit, whose name I can't remember. Then there's Blockbuster. Then you have Scalp Hunter, Vertigo, Prism, and Harpoon. All right, these were the Marauders. Um, yes, and in that time, yes, Sabretooth was Scalp Hunter's little biatch. Y'all ain't gonna like me if y'all like Sabretooth because y'all don't know shit about Sabretooth. Y'all know what the 90s X-Men taught you. But here they go. Wolverine and them, it, that was, he, complete retcon, but he was with them first. And then they decided to make him a Weapon X problem. And then they decided to make him a Wolverine problem. Alright? So just so y'all didn't know, now you know. Here's Scalp Hunter and Gambit. Don't worry. It looks like I might have to make another video. So it looks like you guys might get two instead of three. I believe this is a more modern version of Scalp Hunter. Let's see. No, 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 
these are the X-Men. We did this one. Scalp Hunter. Scalp Hunter. I want you guys to get used to that face. No. Uh, apparently, DC Comics also has a Scalp Hunter. I have no idea who he is. But I will show y'all him, but this isn't about him. But there's DC Comics Scalp Hunter. At the end of this video, or at the end of the entire set, I will let a lot of people ex understand something about scalp hunting. That it actually was not a Native American thing first. But it did become a, a plot device for revenge. Oh, there you go. I'll let you go. Okay. Let's get to his Wikipedia unless I find another picture that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Scalp Hunter. Let's see. Do I want that one? Yeah. You want that one. Scalp Hunter doing some damage. Let's just put it this way. When I said the Marauders were a pain in the ass to the X-Men during the Inferno Saga, I was playing nice. All right, and it all started when um, they grabbed Polaris and turned her into Malice. Alright, we're going to do the Scalp Hunter wiki for this video and the next video. Now why would it do that? And why would it do that? Alright, here we go. Sorry, y'all. I was having some technical difficulties because the DC Scalp Hunter came up as well. All right, Scalp Hunter. Real name, John Greycrow. Fictional character from Marvel Comics. Villain, mutant. Scalp Hunter is a member of the Comanche tribe of Native Americans who originally fought in World War II. He originally fought in World War II for the United States. But he was executed for murdering his fellow officers. He also he is shot... By, by a fire, he was shot by a firing squad and believed to be dead. However, he survived and found a recruiting and enigmatic mastermind, Mr. Sinister, early on. Later, apparently, not working under Sinister, he unalived employees of the Savage Mutant Sabretooth. All right, and offered Sabretooth money to join Scout Hunters' boss, Scout Hunters, as the mercenary. Anyway, which Sabretooth accepted. Years later, they met a thief named Gambit in Candy X-Men 324. It revealed that Grey Crow and Gambit were once co-workers at the Arizona Diner. Wow, did not know that. Anyway, where they, a waitress, Claire Dele, Dele, D E L U C, compromised the trio and close friends. Gambit would later recruit Scout Hunter as a member of the Marauders. This is like some retconning, I believe, because that's not how I remember it. But okay, anyway. A better assassin organization under the apparent colonized and his one-time boss, Sinister. And now recruited him a one-time ally, Sabretooth, who was fail, who was the field leader for a loose team. Who scenes the Marauders were massacres in an entire underground mutant con con at a community known as the Morlock. This is where they went after the X-Men, by the way. He shot a young warlock named Tommy using, after using her to lead the group to the Allies, the Morlocks home, and where the tunnels. This is where the Morlocks lost everything and had to go live under the X-Men mansion, by the way. Alright. Gambit apparently followed the Morlocks, having learned the intentions. This did not happen in the Inferno Saga. <laughs> and managed to save one Morlock, who he, who will grow up to be Meryl. As a flashback, Gambit third series eight X Men. I it applied this more to Gambit than Grey Crow. There's definitely been some rewriting up in this bitch, but that's not how that shit happened in the eighties. Anyway, this is another reason why you have to go and do your research, and I don't know what the hell's going on here. But anyway, the Marauders crash with the X Men and the original X Factor team, as well as Thor, Tower Pack, leaving several Marauders deceased. 
Subsequently, the X-Men thwart the Marauders in the attempt to assassinate Sinister's former pawn, Madeline Pryor, in San Francisco. Falling with, they were once more in New York during the demonic invasion, the Inferno Saga. I say this is where it gets more into the actual shit that's happening. Of course, the TikTok video is about to stop. Um, where was it? They replaced members of the team who were killed with an extract replicas, exact replicas. And this is where it stops because TikTok is going to stop in a couple of seconds. And we're going to pick up But the Marauders later fought and encountered heroes. Yeah, so there's a lot of shit to get through on this motherfucker. Okay. Are you guys on TikTok? Hang tight. Really? Damn machine? He's not on this picture, but this is where Sabretooth was before they rewrote him and made him who he is. Alright? And basically everything I read for you guys here on YouTube, there's been some rewriting because I don't recall Gambit ever meeting him back in the 80s. Like that, and Gambit kind of wasn't really introduced into the X-Men comics until the like 90s. So, there's been some rewriting just to clarify that shit. There's been some extensive rewriting, but we're just going to keep going with it because I don't work for Marvel, at least not yet. But anyway. Of course, you know, all that stuff could happen off panel, but the Inferno Saga, I paid $85 for that book that's down in this damn thing here. So trust me when I tell you, I know what the fuck I was talking about before retconning. Okay, this is video two for TikTok. Instagram, I mean, YouTube, we haven't stopped. Where was I? The Marauders, something. Okay. The Marauders later fought and dismantled displaced Nate Gray after trying to assassinate Sinister's former Sergeant T H R E N O D E. Wait, N O D Y. Um, he was killed and then cloned. When Sinister opposed the Dr. Robert Winshear, a scientist in Weapon X program, Scalp Hunter is still helping him out, helping him obtain mutant DNA. As Sinister supposedly helps prisoners escape, only to take them to his own labs and do experiments. Scalp Hunter is one of the still proven mutants living intent on the X Men Institute lawn. After almost all the mutants were depowered following the events of the dissemination storyline. Don't ask. I didn't read that. I, I, there's a reason why I stopped reading in 2010. This is part of it. Um, when the immortal mutant apocalypse comes, Scalp Hunter leaves and serves him. When Havoc warns Scalp Hunter and fellow apocalypse recruits Fever Pitch and Skids that they are in over their heads, Scalp Hunter replies... <laughs> To Apocalypse and has explained that he is on the side of mutants and in, and in this case they are all in danger from, be, uh, from becoming extinct. In the X-Men Militia Complex, see this is some shit that I 
didn't read. All right. Storyline follows Apocalypse defeat Scalp Hunter returns to his master to rejoin the Marauder. Scalp Hunter is involved in initial assault on Cooperstown, Alaska, for the mutant child. During X Men's search for the mutant child, he shoots and badly injures Nightcrawler. He later assists the team in their defense against Sinister's base from the X Men on Muir Island. During the battle, he shoots Wolverine in the head and subsequently is pent to the wall with one of Warpath's knives <laughs> when he um, tries to unalive. I don't know how the hell you say that, but we're going to spell it for you H E P Z I B A H. All right. So I'm only going to read, okay, it's just two paragraphs. We're just going to go ahead and get through it. In X-Men Divided We Stand, after Sinister defeats and the death of the disband of the rest of the Marauders, Scalp Hunter flees to a small town in the desert where he gains work at a diner as a cook. <laughs> he fires the X-Men. I mean, he fears the X-Men are going to kill him and has fully gone into hiding. A preacher begins to eat at the diner and constantly plagues constant consistently plagues Scalp Hunter with um assistant chatter. I guess he's getting on his nerve. One night Nightcrawler attacks Scalp Hunter in his trailer, <laughs> revealing that he was the preacher in disguise. Scalp Hunter tries to kill him, but is easily defeated. Nightcrawler tells him he sought out to kill him, but changed his mind when he realized Scalp Hunter had no soul. He was he was just a copy of a copy. He then forgives Scalp Hunter for all his sins, past and future, and then leaves. The next day Scalp Hunter seen back in the diner cooking. Now wondering now wearing a gold a gold cross. Okay, so I guess Nightcrawler gave him a cross. He also has tried to mend fences with the X-Men, notifying them of breaks in the Sinister's old labs. During the X-Men Utopia storyline, Scalp Hunter is captured by a group of non-mutant superhumans and forced to fly a cargo of five mutant-eating creatures to the X-Men on Utopia. In the new status quo for the X-Men post House of X and Power of X, Professor X, yeah, Magneto invites all mutants to live in Krakoa. This is more up-to-date shit. Shit that I just refuse to read. Sometime later, he joins a loose group of outcast mutants operating under Mr. Sinister, the Hellions. That's new, because the old Hellions worked for Emma Frost. For those back in the 80s, they were part of her school, which Warpath was a part of. Anyway, which almost compressed havoc Cannon, Empath, Wild Child, Nanny, and Orphan Maker. Alright, so this Wikipedia gave me some shit that I wasn't supposed to get. So we're going to go to a different freaking Wikipedia. Because none of this shit should have even been a thing. You know, obviously, I should have went to the fandom. Let's see what kind of BS they're going to give me. John Gray Crow 616. John Gray Crow 616. All right, let's see what it says. John Gray Crow was a Native American from an unidentified tribe, which is bullshit. But, you know, this is the fandom. That's why when you do the fandoms and the wikis, you have to be real careful with the shit that you are reading. In Candy X Men 210, first appearance, July. 1986, Uncanny X-Men, 211, August 1986, alright, you see the, you see the clusterfuck that I'm getting here, alright, let's just go ahead and read the shit, you, I already told you guys he was in World War II, and then he was dig, done in by a firing squad, so basically it repeats everything about him and Gambit, Madeline Pryor, and the Marauders, the Mutant Massacre, Sinister sent the Marauders. That was when they went after the Morlocks in Los Angeles. So it's pretty much the same crap. You know, targeting the X-Men allies. I don't know what the hell that is in the corner. 
Later to talk about the Inferno Saga. I don't know why everything shrunk down. Fighting Nate Gray. Post M Day. See, this is the thing about why you have to go do your research on your own. This thing is not giving y'all the shit that I grew up knowing. It's giving, like, all new shit and then some power scaling. Which I can't seem to get up. His intelligence level is 2. His strength level is 2. His speed level is 2. His durability is 4. His energy projecting is 1. His fighting skills is 5. Alright, I have no idea whatever that is. Something about attributes. Um, I guess it says paraphernalia. The equipment he contains is a scrap of weapons. You see, this doesn't even give y'all his like actual mutant powers. Yeah, because he is a mutant. It's kind of like Forge. But it, is, it has nothing. It literally has nothing. This is why I say you really got to do your own research. And for some reason, I do not know why it does not have this scalp hunter's actual shit. Let's try Comic Vine. See? Now y'all know why the video is so special. Origins of John Greycrow. John Greycrow was a cybernetic augmented mutant who fought during World War II in the United States. But he was executed for scalping eight fellow officers. I guess that's more detail. And um, he was blindfolded and tied to a stake to be slaughtered and splat. Nick Fury... Always Nick Fury. As his last word, whatever that is, don't activate. As his last word, almost forgot, almost got beaten. However, he got lucky instead of bringing the victims Fury's wrath. He was shot by a firing squad and believed to be killed and buried, and they buried him. Yet, unbeknownst to the U.S. Army, he survived thanks to his healing factor. Okay, so his healing factor is his power. I uh, shouldn't have had to go through all that shit. But, there's the picture I showed you guys earlier. That, oh, we might learn the members of the Marauders. Is it going to give me the members? No, it's not going to give me the members of the Marauders. Of course it's not. Because that would be too much like the right freaking thing to do. Again, I don't understand why this is like not giving you everything you need to know about him. But this is that thing, like, I probably should have went to Marvel.com or something, but um, it's not giving me shit. And that's the thing about this thing. Click on the Marvel Scalp Hunter database. Let's see if I click on this wiki again. Let's see what the fuck happens. We're going to have to make a third video. It went right back to that same old shit. I hate technology. It's League of Geek Comics. Let's see what they say. TikTok here about to end in like four seconds. Alright, so when we come back, we'll read the history of John Grey Crow one more time. Hey, this is video two for TikTok. Instagram. Okay. I apologize, y'all. First villain I do... And everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Come on. Or do you? Go back to period in. Change it to yellow. Go back to all. Copy. Yeah, like I said, a lot of this shit has been like severely retconned. Because a lot of the shit that I'm reading, like the fandom and all the other shit, that's um, like utter bullshit. What the fuck just happened? It didn't let me pace. What the fuck? Technology, yo. Technology. Here we go again. This is part three. I'm going to try to end this. So let's read this one from this Marvel geek something or something or another um i don't know what the damn hell i got it from but it, it's from league of comic geeks dot com that's where it's from all right let's go ahead and give this history of john gray crow let's see if there's any augmentations from the last two things that i've read 
John Gray Crow was a Native American from an unidentified, he is not an unidentified, he is Comanche, but we, okay, you know, here we go. We fought in World War II, we got all that. So, it gets to the part where decades later he worked with the, in a diner in the milestone, in milestone, Arizona, with Remy LeBeau, that would be Gambit and Claire DeLuke LeBeau. Oh, sorry, it disappeared there, my bad. LeBeau later recruited him. See, I read all of this crap, so nothing much has changed there. Then it talks about um, his first mission, the Marauders were tasked to assassinate um, Sinister's former pawn, Madeline Pryor. This is when they went after Cable when he was a baby, etc., etc. And um, Apocalypse had some hand in the, in the Inferno saga, but it would be like the next saga when Nate would have the... Um, the legacy virus. So skipping down, it says later he appeared and received uh, presumed resurrected by the five and accepted Xavier's intentions, invitation, excuse me, to all mutants to join them in Kokoa. See, like I said, everything's going like in different fucking directions. During their first mission, he was captured along with Nanny, Orphan Maker, while the others were off battling the rest of the Marauders. He and the Goblin Queen, what the hell? <laughs> Why can't they just keep it the story that's supposed to have been told from the 80s? Anyway, while being cut open and decaying, preserved Archlight, he was saved by his teammate Wild Child, teammates Wild Child and Psylocke and Havoc, who blew up the house, defeated the rest of the Marauders, John, after the mission, seen enjoying himself in Krakoa Shores, and he visited Wild Child in Psylocke. He's an empath in mutual hatred. Okay, him and empath. I have no idea who empath is. See, this is the this is the reason why I stopped reading comics. Um, I have a John Gray Crow file card somewhere in that shed. Most everything I read is pretty close to right, except for the fact that they left off a lot of shit with him being a marauder. Fandom got some shit confused. Um, fandom, we also got some more shit confused. And let's not get them mixed up with the Scalp Hunter from the DC Universe. But, um... This is him working with Psylocke. No. Now, the very first time, for those who do not know, Psylocke was actually European when they first encountered the um, Marauders. Alright. This Psylocke, I believe, is the Asian Kiwan. Kion, Kanon. I can't say her damn name. Alright. But anyway. I gave up reading long before this came out. I literally stopped reading comic books. Because they kept messing with my X-Men. They kept defeating and destroying. And just unaliving all of my favorites. Starting with that lady in the front. Kion, Kion, Psylocke. No. After 2010. It was done for me with the X-Men. It was just straight done. There was no point of me continuing to read the X-Men. Okay. So... This was the Asian Psylocke, and that one there, not so much. That one's the white Psylocke, that was the white Psylocke. So if you look at this cover, it's going through all the changes of Psylocke. But at the end, um, I think she managed to go back to being um, a white lady, and Kian went back to being in her Asian body. And fun fact, even though this has nothing to do with Native Americans, there is a Native American Captain Britain. I will explore that before I do that, but um, since this is about Scalp Hunter, uh, they leave off a lot of stuff, and I don't know why they changed them. They did the same thing with Wyatt Wingfoot, because Wyatt Wingfoot came from an unidentifiable tribe back in the 80s too, but then all of a sudden, they have given him a tribe. So you, you see how this works, and John Greco was a Comanche, you know, um, He's a Comanche, both Forge and Danielle are Cheyenne, and um, 
you know, I forgot what Puma is, but we're going to um, figure out who I'm going to do next. So I'm going to leave you with images of John Grey Crow. I am highly disappointed because this is not how this video was supposed to work out. Wikipedia was supposed to give me everything. Height, powers, origin. It gave me a side-ass story. And it also gave me information that there's a DC comic scalp hunter that I never knew existed. So thank you for that. But as for everything else, I pretty much got, like, screwed. You know. Um, they said this is scalp hunter. Looks more like the Shredder, but I'll take it. And so will you. They said that's Scalp Hunter. I don't know why, but it's it's written there. It also says Marvel, so it's got to be the right guy. What was that under there? Okay, these are all old ones that I possibly show. Let's, let's, let's show Scalp Hunter with the Gatlin. There's Scalp Hunter with the Gatlin. Looking all kinds of nasty. Now, I forgot um, about this, like, metal again. Some things have been changed because the suit, I forgot how he got the suit or why his suit is mostly or covering up his body and only certain parts of his body is showing. Something happened to him, and I can't remember what the hell it was. And apparently it's been retconned because it's not in the Wikipedia. Yeah. You know? So, there he is again. Scalp Hunter, Scalp Hunter, Scalp Hunter. Um, I don't know if him and Archlight ever actually had a relationship. Ooh, apparently there's a toy that clearly got by me. Looks cool. Looks authentic. I even gave him his handlebar mustache. He kind of looks like that dude um, from Hall of Notes. Here's him cleaning his rifle. And the reason why I said I forgot about the suit is because of, as you can see, both of his hands are normal hands, not like Forge's hand. Yeah. So I think tomorrow I will also do a villain that's a Native American. I'm trying to, like, lean it out because I really want to do the X-Men, like, next week versus this week. But technically, Scout Hunter currently could be considered an X-Men. But um, I'm not going to swear to that. So we're going to give you guys a couple of more pics of him while the time is still going. Uh, here's that. No. That was basically so you can get the dialogue. There's that. If this isn't showing up raw on... YouTube, I apologize. Let's see. I don't know why this got Punisher 2099 there. Here's that. Now I understand. Um, this thing did Scout Puncher kind of dirty. No, restart this whole day. Now it's you guys. TikTok. Thank you guys for watching. I am your host, Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is for you. Your ending is here. Your ending is now. I will reveal the villain that I'm going to do only on YouTube. So thank you guys on TikTok for watching. And happy Native American Heritage Day. Okay. So. Here's what's going to happen. Oh, for the love of God. Come on, damn it. What, what the hell is that? No. Okay. I don't know why I won't paste. Like I said, there are technical issues. Okay. Damn, almost didn't post it. Okay, so while those are posting, 
I'm gonna hit the home button so that I don't get any unexpected videos popping up and talking. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, tomorrow, Friday, we are going to do Puma. He's one of Spider-Man's enemies, so we are going to do Puma. So that Native American, we are going to do Puma. I'm going to Google him and um figure out what they've done to him, like they've done to Grey Crow. So I'm sorry that this video has been so long. I had some technical difficulties, so I do apologize to the 322 of you who are here. Thank you for watching. I'm Echo Fan Grey Wolf. Yes, I know I need a shave. Thank you for watching. Be seeing you.